we're moving away from shape now uh, and we're going to look at well broadly the topic that we're going to be looking at uh, is probability um, so talking about what is the chance of something happening and we're going to start this topic by looking at what we call sample space diagrams now these are really in comparison to the maths that we've been doing for the past couple of weeks you're going to find these uh, really really nice okay so We'll start, this is the only definition we'll have to write today. Um, a sample space diagram basically helps us. So um, it might be that you're rolling a die, uh, rolling a dice and tossing a coin, um, and you want a systematic way of writing down everything that could happen. So it's a way, it's like a table that we can fill in to show all the possible outcomes. So let's quickly write that down, just because I don't think a sample space diagram I don't think the name is obvious. So sample space diagrams show um, all the possible outcomes of two events. All the possible outcomes of two events. And once we draw one, you'll see uh, just what I mean. You'll see that they're really not too bad at all. Right, I'd like you to draw me two circles, like two spinners. Um, I don't know how I've got a circle I can draw around, or I might just have to go freehand and see what happens. So draw me two, um, two circles. These are going to be our spinners. Um, and I'd like you to split your circles into three. So we've got two, uh, imagine they're like spinners that you can uh, spin round. And so we've got two spinners like that. On this spinner, I'm going to write A, B, and C. It doesn't matter which order you've put them in. And on this spinner, I'm going to have one, two, three. So we're going to spin both spinners, and we're going to write down what we get. So we might get a B and a three, or we might get a C and a one. Okay, and we're going to draw ourselves a sample space diagram to show all the possible outcomes. And they're dead easy to draw. They're really, really simple to draw. So I'm going to draw myself a table um, so I'm going to have a down, and I haven't measured this, so I'm just going to draw a couple of lines and I'll fill it in. A down and then a cross. So I'm going to have uh, one of my spinners going across and one of my spinners going down, and it doesn't matter which way you put those. So I'm going to have A, B, and C going across there, and then we're going to have one, two, and three uh, going down there, but it doesn't matter where. Uh, where you put them and then we're going to fill in our grid so we're going to say um, what what could I get well I could get a one and an a so I'm going to put one comma a that's one of the options the next option is one comma b or I could get a one and a c get the idea I could get a two and an a I could get a two and a b or I could get a two and a c and I could get a 3 and an A, and I could get a 3 and a B, or I could get a 3 and a C. So that, that's a sample space diagram. Simple as that. Okay? Now sometimes we just need to make sure we're reading the question really, really carefully. Because sometimes I might have two spinners with numbers on, and it might ask me to uh, spin them and add my results. Or it might ask me to spin them and multiply my results. We'll do one of those in a second. But they're really as simple as it goes. Now, the reason that we look at sample space diagrams is because, uh, because I've got all the results listed, and I've done that really quickly, I can answer probability questions really, really easily. Okay? So let's have a look at the kind of thing they could ask. So they might say, what is the probability of getting... Um, a 2 and a B. So what's the probability of getting a 2 and a B? Well, all we have to ask ourselves two questions. In our sample space diagram, so now I'm, I'm looking at all the outcomes, so I'm looking at just this bit of my diagram. I don't worry about the bits around the edge, I'm just looking at the stuff, what we call the outcomes. I'm just looking at the stuff in the pink box, okay? So I'm just looking at that stuff there, and I have to ask myself two questions. How many 
outcomes have I got in that box? Well, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And how many times does 2B appear? Well, I've only got one 2B, so one would go on the top. So that would be my probability, one ninth. Often we give probabilities as fractions. So that would be my probability. Right, let's have a look at one more probability question, then we'll do another sample space diagram. So uh, what is the probability? Remember, you can pause if you want to add any notes or write anything else down of getting a three. So again, two questions. How many outcomes are there altogether? Well, there's nine. That hasn't changed. How many times does the number three appear? One, two, three. So that appears three times. Now, well done to those of you who have put in equals because you can see that I can simplify this fraction. I can divide the top and the bottom by three. So three divided by three is one and nine divided by three is three. Okay, so that's the first type of sample space diagram um, where I've got two things like this um, and I write them, there's, there's nothing I can do with an A and a 1, I just have to write them next to each other. We'll look at one more um, with, um, uh, when I have to do something with the numbers uh, and then I'll let you get on. There's only going to be two videos this week, um, so there's not, not as much work this week, you worked exceptionally hard last week, so uh, have a little bit of a breather this week. So we'll, uh, only two videos to watch and the maths in comparison to what you have been doing. Uh, it's really, really quite nice. Right, let's have a look at one more. Let's just do those two spinners again like we did last time. Okay, so um, let's draw ourselves two spinners. You're probably doing this really neatly with your... You've probably found something to draw around. Um, so again, let's just have... Well, actually, I'm going to have a three and I'm going to have a four like that. So I'm going to put... Now, careful, I'm not going to put one, two, three. I'm going to put two four and six on that one and I'm going to put one two three four on that one right and now the rule is kind of a bit like a funfair game maybe our rule is going to be we're going to spin and add them so imagine we're at the funfair this is an exceptionally fun uh, exceptionally fun option you know why would you go on a ride when you could spin two spinners um, right, so we need to draw ourselves a our simple space diagram, and it's going to be nothing more than exactly the same as what we did last time. And I'm going to have one of my spinners uh, on one side, and I'm going to have one of my spinners on the other side. Um, like that. Okay, so I've got this spinner down here, and I've got the other spinner across the top. It doesn't matter which way you put those. I could have had my one, two, three, four down here. Now you might want to, just to remind yourself what the rule is, you might want to pop a little add there, just to remind yourself this is what we're doing. So we've spun them, and if I get a two and a one, remember I'm adding them, so I would get three. If I got a two and a two, it would be four, two and three, two and four. So let's fill this in. So I'm just adding the entries this time. So I've got six and one, Six and two, six and three, six and four. Okay, so that's my sample space diagram for those two spinners, given that I'm, my rule is that I have to add. So, let's have a look at uh, what kind of thing could they ask us. Well, they might ask us, what's the probability um, of getting an even number? So what's the probability of getting an even number? Right, well, two questions. How many options have I got all together? Remember, I'm just looking in my table. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So the number on the bottom of my fraction is going to be 12. What's the probability of getting an even number? Right, well, how many evens have I got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I've got 6. And now, hopefully you're thinking, right, 6 over 12... I can divide the top and bottom by 6, or you could do it by 2 or by 3. Uh, 6 divided by 6 is 1, Ooh. and 12 divided by 6 is 2. So that would be a half. Okay? 
And we could ask all sorts of things. We could say, what's the probability of getting a 10? What's the probability of getting a number bigger than 7? There's loads and loads of questions we could ask. Okay? Right, I'd like you then uh, to have a go now at worksheet 1. Now, you don't have to be printing these worksheets off. Okay? Just doing it on paper is absolutely fine. Or do it in your book if you've got your book. Make sure you keep everything that you do because we'll, we'll file it all away uh, when we get back to school. OK, so please do worksheet one. Again, send me photos of notes. I'm dishing out loads and loads of achievement points. Uh, so send me photos. Ask me if you get stuck. Uh, I'm here to help. So uh, you just have to ask.